The U.S. economy slowed much more in the first quarter than anyone had anticipated. And joining me to talk about what this means for Fed tapering is Joe Greco from Meridian. So, Joe, when I talked to you last Friday, going into what you thought would happen today, everyone sort of thought it would remain around 2.4 percent, but it actually dropped to 1.8 percent. What exactly does that now mean for Fed tapering? Yeah, well, that's, you know, uh, as we had discussed then, we were hoping that it was going to be, you know, kind of nose the estimates. Instead, it was considerably lower, which could mean that bad news is once again good for the marketplace. We see the futures are up, the market's trading a little healthier today for a multitude of reasons. But I do believe that uh, that miss on GDP will definitely weigh heavy on, uh, you know, Fed decision making. And that exactly was going to be my second question. Is bad news actually good news? Because now it's sort of kind of pumps the brakes on the Fed statements that they could start scaling back sometime soon this year. Well, I tend to think really the Fed is telegraphing to us that they, they are absolutely interested in slowing their asset purchasing. They really want to start to push, you know, the child out the door and let them go out on and let us go out on our own a bit. So they're they're still angling towards that. And I don't think it's going to necessarily change the fact that tapering will take place or rather a varied pace will take place. But it's just one, how much the magnitude and two, the frequency of that variation in which you know, we're seeing play out right now. So I do think this is going to weigh more on the side of stay involved, perhaps, you know, differentiate on a smaller scale and spread it out over a longer period of time. And also with the report today, we did see consumer spending revised down from originally 3.4 percent to now 2.6 percent. So are we actually beginning to see the effects from the tax hikes in January as well as the sequestration cuts? Probably a little more of the tax hikes than sequestration. As we know, sequestration had a lot more hot air in it than uh, than anything else. The actual uh, number of Americans and, and you know civil servants impacted by it, as well as contractors impacted by it, was not as great as you know the government was making it out to be at the time. It was really more of a, you know a nice media frenzy, but. All things, all things told. Um, but we, what we are seeing is not only the tax hikes and also, of course, the lingering on and under employment that is weighing on the consumer. You know, consumers go through cyclical, uh, you know, uh, purchasing. We saw that, uh, you know, around the holidays into last year, the January numbers were OK and then it started to scale back. I would hope to see towards the end of the summer, you know, back to school time, we see a little bit uptick in consumer spending. But in the meantime, I'd, I, I'm much happier. Instead of seeing consumer spending, I'm much happier seeing um, household debt decreasing, which is really good because that means you're able to spend at some point. And then, of course, you want to see it a little sooner than later to beef up the capitalist market. And finally, economists are suggesting that once real GDP gets to around 3 percent, that's when the Fed will absolutely start trying to scale back on their stimulus. What exactly needs to happen to get real GDP there to 3 percent? Uh, quite a few things, quite a few things. It ties into both, um, you know, the ability for or the, the desire for the consumer to tap in but worldwide, the global consumer to tap into all the money they've started to save, the credit they've started to repair and rebuild, and of course, employment levels to increase. Um, you know, wages need to need to go up, you know, considerably, and you start to you need to start to see the global trade imbalances shifting around. Right now, everyone is kind of looking to the left and the right saying, you know, I'm responsible for you. No, 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 you're responsible for me. Wait a sec. And, and everybody's putting not necessarily the blame, but looking for the other party to take responsibility and kind of beef up the economy here. Purchasing is not going to increase. GDP is not going to increase without that. We're increasing debt. We're just not increasing production or spending or seeing spending on a global scale.